Education and Projects Committee uh, to order. It's um, April 13th. 13th. And um, do I have, does somebody have an extra? Can I have a? I can see the agenda. Thank okay. you. Um, let the record show that uh, all members of the um, committee are present today. And uh, is there any public comment on matters which are not on today's agenda? I'm not seeing any, so um, we will now uh, adjourn or recess into closed session. This is item one on our uh, agenda. It's a conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation. All right, then. Uh, we're coming, we're reconvening in open session after being in closed session. It's now uh, 2.43 p.m. Uh, with regard to report, there is no reportable action taken in closed session. And we're going to move on to our open session component of this special meeting. The first thing of which is our item 3.1 in connection with the Connected Vehicle and Autonomous Vehicle Program, we're going to receive an update from Gomentum Station Subcommittee. Is there a staff report? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Trotter and committee members. My name is Tim Hale, the Deputy Executive Director for Projects. And just to kind of recap, um, in 2014, the authority launched a comprehensive CVAV program in Northern California to foster research and innovation in the field of CV applications and technologies through the CVAV program. A cloud of partnership with Gomentum Station Incorporated was formed to create a testbed called Gomentum Station. So the authority of Gomentum Station Incorporated and the city of Concord are leading a collaborative effort to accelerate the next generation of transportation technologies at the Gomentum Station testbed. And based on the growth of the Gomentum Station and global recognition, the American Automobile Association Northern California has expressed interest in acquiring and partnering with Gomentum Station Incorporated. Um, the authority received a letter of intent based on the due diligence process between AAA and Gomentum. And the goals and vision of Gomentum align with AAA's vision to create a collaborative space for the safe implementation of autonomous vehicles. On April 5th, 2018, the APC formed a subcommittee to discuss the letter of intent with AAA. Commissioner Trotter and Arnrich were appointed to the Gomentum Station subcommittee. And this week, on April 10th, 2018, the subcommittee and myself met with AAA to discuss the letter of intent. The subcommittee expressed the authority's interest in Gomentum Station, including economic growth and smart job creation in Contra Costa, leveraging Gomentum Station for autonomous vehicle applications in Contra Costa, and continued growth of Gomentum Station at the Concord Naples Weapons Station. AAA shared similar interest and agreed their goals and interests align with the view of the authorities. And at the meeting, the subcommittee and AAA discussed the future operations and the roles of the authority at AAA at Gomentum Station. And AAA is committed to having CCTA as an important stakeholder and will participate in testing, demonstrations, outreach, operations at Gomentum Station, including responsibilities for public agency coordination, obtaining agency approvals and permits, design and construction of site enhancements and demonstration projects, facilitating deployment of demonstration projects and administration of state and federal funding. And AAA will be responsible for the management, partnerships, planning and coordination, operations and maintenance, testing, marketing outreach at Gomentum Station. So through the letter of intent and a discussion with AAA, AAA is seeking support and acknowledgement from the CCTA board of their intentions for the partnership with Gomentum Station Incorporated. And this summarizes the discussions of the subcommittee and AAA regarding the letter of intent. Myself and the subcommittee are here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions of the committee, of staff, or the subcommittee? Tom? I have some questions. Do you want to be on mic? We on here. Okay. So I'm still trying to understand all these relationships. I learn something new every day. So um, the Navy, the Navy owns and has complete control over Concord Naval Weapons Station, right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. So the Navy has has licensed the city of Concord to use a portion of it. As a as the test bed, right? I was going to intervene just for a moment. Okay. We have a three-page slideshow that maybe oh, okay. I out. didn't know that. All right. Okay, all right. And, well, both the relationships and where we see yeah, those relationships oh, evolving. Fine, I'm. That's good. That's good. Put that one on. Too. Okay. Turn on the turn on the light. Yeah. 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 There we go. Sorry, Tom. I didn't want to cut you off. But. So. I'm actually going to be reviewing this uh, presentation in the next agenda item. 
um, to talk about the co-op agreement, but we can cover it here this as well. This is the right time. Yeah, so there's a the partnership framework that's set forth is the you know the United States Navy, Navy um, has the Conquer Naval Weapons Station and it's going through the BRAC process and transferring that property over to the city of Concord. And so the United States Navy and the city of Concord have a master license that's renewed annually um, between the United States Navy, from the, between the Navy and the city of Concord. And so that's, if you look to the, this graphic, you see the test bed. And so that's Concord Naval Weapons Station, that's the location. And then Concord and, and Navy have a master license. And then for us, for the Gomentum Station, in order to have a Gomentum Station operate at the Concord Naval Weapons Station, CCTA holds a sub-license from the city of Concord um, for, <coughs> the, you, for access to the Concord Naval Weapons Station. And so, and that sub-license is also renewed annually. So it's a one-year master license and a one-year sub-license um, between the Navy, city of Concord, and CCTA. And to understand the roles and responsibilities between the city of Concord and CCTA, as relates to that sublicense, there's an MOU, so that's on the right-hand side of the screen here. So that MOU describes the relationships, the roles and responsibilities in terms of access of the Concord Naval Weapons Station relative to the sublicense and access to the test bed. And then we have a currently, in November of 2016, the authority board entered into an MOU between CCTA and Gomentum Station Incorporated to formalize the roles and responsibilities for um, operations of Gomentum Station at the Concord Naval Weapons Station. And so in those roles and responsibilities just in general is that CCTA will provide reasonable assistance to Gomentum Station Incorporated to uh, manage the day-to-day -day operations, uh, perform uh, uh, scheduling of the partners for testing, um, also do uh, demonstrate, you know, help with demonstrations, facilitate demonstrations, but Gomentum Station Incorporated, they're responsible for the coordination with the partners, the testing, um, the operations of the testing, the demonstration projects at Gomentum Station, and they're also responsible for the partnership MOUs um, for the Gomentum Station program. And so, so this is a very, it's a, it's a collaborative partnership. And so today, the framework is this is a public-private partnership. And so right now, CCTA and Gomentum Station Incorporated are working together. And right now, the current MOU, the November 2016 MOU, does not allow for any tr uh, transfer of funds between the two entities. And so this is kind of getting more future in the next agenda item. But what we're looking to now is that as both entities are starting to receive public funds and private funds, we have to start looking at the MOU to realign the roles of responsibilities and also um, create a mechanism to transfer funds between the two entities. And so right now, this, this is what will the future. So let me ask you yeah. just to, that you, you should probably show the other slide that shows the current condition as to who has responsibility for what in the current before, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. I mean, it, it, there's a rather, it's a rather, yeah, this one with the. So with that. this is this is what is happening today at Gomentum Station. And so I know this is a little, so here's Gomentum Station Incorporated. And so they, they own the MOUs and the partnerships with the testing partners. We're working collaboratively together to operate what's called Gomentum Station at the test bed. And so what we do through the CVAV program, through, through the CVAV program, and this is what's memorialized in the, 20, the November 2016 MOU, these are the roles and responsibilities that CCTA provides to Gomentum Station today. And then Gomentum Station Incorporated, as, as I said, they're responsible for the partnerships testing in the CV applications. So can I ask a question? So... Um, so does CCTA get compensated for anything it's doing now? We do have state and federal grants that we've received in the past to be compensated for the time we spent on Gomentum Station Incorporated. So okay. we received a, a, a grant from USDOT for some technology projects we've used to help support um, the operations at Gomentum Station. So that pays for the services that CCTA is providing. 
And does does so does Gomenum Station have employees? It has one half-time employee. Okay. And so, I mean, I guess the point here, Tim, is that currently the bulk of the day-to-day -day and all the responsibilities between Gomenum and CCTA line up on our side of the ledger. We're doing most of the work. The idea is to completely readjust that under this proposal, which will ultimately involve AAA. And that's the next slide. So as, as Commissioner Trotter, Chair Trotter was mentioning, the, the program is getting, it's, it's growing to an extent that that particular, that framework is, no, is not going to be sustainable. And so as we're starting to get new funding streams into Gomentum Station, private and also state and federal funds, we have to relook at the, our relationship between Gomentum Station and CCTA and realign the responsibilities because we have these new funding streams. And so with the master cooperative agreement, um, this is how the responsibilities will be realigned. And this is what we, this is what we discussed with AAA this week. And, and they were amenable and excited about the alignment of this partnership. Quick, got a quick question. So, so these services that are listed under CCTA on the right side of that slide, um, how does CCTA get compensated for those? So the master cooperative agreement, we, CCT will be able to seek reimbursement from Gomentum Station for those services. Okay. Can I can I also suggest on this slide, consistent with some of the other discussions we've been having, that on the 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 agreement responsibilities thing, that there be there should probably be consideration of another bullet point on the CCTA side, along the lines of sub license management and maintenance. Yes, absolutely. I, also, are we going to show that anybody from CCTA has kind of a, would it be Lindsay or would it be somebody who's kind of taken all that under their their wing? You mean who well, would manage that? Yeah, the CCTA who would, side. Who, well, would, who would distribute it? It's through the agency. So so that that's actually currently. Are you so on mic? You're on mic. Yeah. So at CCTA, we have a we have a ITS CVAV program manager, and that role is to um, is to oversee and manage our responsibilities as it relates to the Gomentum Station program. Who is it? Jack Hall. No. Okay, because I guess what I was what I was really kind of referring to was like. The agency approvals, design, construction. I mean, there's a lot there. So would Jack Hall be all that? So we would have Jack Hall and then also have support from our program management consultant as well. And who would that be? So that would be currently at Stantec. Okay. Well, then that. And, and ultimately, these are all functions that will be one way or the other reimbursed through state, federal, and funding, grant funding, and other other independent resources? That's correct. Okay. So it would be either through state, federal funds, or by reimbursement of private funds through this new funding agreement. Gotcha. Any other questions on what we've basically jumped quite ahead into our uh, our agenda, our regular agenda, which is fine by me. Um, we were, this was ostensibly a, a report out by the subcommittee, and, and um, I can just say, I mean, Newell has mentioned it before, and some of that happened in closed session, but to the extent that we want to share it in open session, that's also fine. We had a very productive meeting on April 10th with uh, the folks from AAA, and were able to explain, you know, the we basically gave them a, a, a stripped-down version of this presentation, and I think they got a they they got a better in maybe a new appreciation of what <clears throat> CCTA can do in the after condition to facilitate the success of Gomentum Station and help, you know, help them in whatever mission they're trying to accomplish out there as well. And hopefully these things will then now be something that we can, you know, make sure these concepts get uh, completely and properly incorporated into the, the new master 
cooperative agreement that we're in the process of trying to prepare and approve. Anything you want to add to that, Noel? Yeah, if I could just add a little bit, and maybe to what Tom was um, thinking about, is uh, one, what are the assets? There are physical assets out there. We own some traffic signals, portable things, things like that. Um, and those are st uh, pretty much a state of value, round number about $900,000. Um, because Gomentum Stations was incorporated as a 501c3 um, charitable entity, <laughs> Um, AAA is a not-for-profit public benefit corporation. They will technically, um, their proposal is to buy Gomentum, um, but because they are different legal entities, Gomentum Station as a 501c3. They're a mutual benefit. I'm sorry, mutual. Public benefit. Yeah, sorry, mutual, mutual benefit. benefit. So they would be have to donate an equivalent 900,000, whatever the actual assets are, to other nonprofit charitable organizations. Which potentially could include CCTA. Have we done research on whether that's permissible? Yeah. Well, I'm surprised. Yeah. Um, yes, that is so, the question is whether we are, we are a potential <laughs> recipient of this necessary largesse. And, and the reason for that is obviously, as Tom, as you know, because they are different legal entities, mm -hmm. uh, they would then reform. Um, a new one still called Gomentum um, because they would own that, that name. Mm -hmm. The most important thing that I think that they conveyed and we had conveyed it and they confirmed it is that they see that this is a partnership and that their and the principles of agreement and however it comes out that Gomentum will always be here. It will not move. It will not do that. That, that is only up to us. Um, and the role, they want us to act just as we do in building bridges and tunnels. They want us for the infrastructure needs that will grow with this facility, um, to us to act as that agency to help oversee, um, build those, and share the technology with us that we, in fact, can then try on our 680 smart quarter, be able to test some of those things there, implement them out in the field. So, um, and their commitment to um, the substantial amount of money that they're talking about um, but they see this as just another way of forming a larger partnership. And that, that was really good to know because that's the story and what their goal is. Um, they um, want to be part of, as an insurance company, in order to put a autonomous vehicle, connected vehicle, and get insurance for it, they want to help be able to understand what those risks are, help write, uh, come up with the underwriting standards, um, how to do that. And they see this as, since it, and I didn't know this, their headquarters I thought was San Francisco. It is right next door. That is their headquarters. Um, and they see this as just a, a um, wonderful opportunity to have a real marriage. And I think that that's how they view it. And they're willing and have made um, a commitment to put up to a quarter of a billion dollars, $250 million into this. Um, all the things Dave kind of had already went through and made some suggestions as wearing his attorney hat, but also to help clarify our position, they thought all of those were absolutely fine. Um, but I think um, with their gig car program, um, the things that they're working on, this is just a, a higher, deeper level of intensity. They see the, the partnership of the eventual of an engineering school being located in Concord. They believe being in Concord is the right place. It's close to them. Um, so the synergy was really good. So and, and, and the fact that they're headquartered in Contra Costa County alleviates any concerns. Right. We're going to make this contractual, but they want to be here too, and we right. want them to remain here. So there was no hesitation on their part, and they, you know that any um, – any um, oversight on their part about maybe making employment office or things like that was um, just a pure, unknowing oversight on their part. So I think it was all um, um, very comfortable cons given our concerns about knowing the details and they're willing to do whatever it is that we felt um, appropriate that they would go along with that. Is there any, Tim, you want to add to that? I would just like to add that based on our conversations and with the letter of intent and because AAA wants to be a transparent and a really good partner, uh, AAA is really seeking interest um, to make sure that the board is okay with this transaction moving forward. And so um, that's something that we'll be looking for the APC to discuss. So any other questions of staff on this? Uh, I had Julie. I just, and I think Newell said it, but I want to be just super, super clear. Um, 
as we went through the slides, um, it was made clear that current status is that CCTA has the sublicense for the test bed itself with the city of Concord. We own that now. And if I'm understanding correctly, okay. AAA is fine with us continuing to own that sublicense as a public entity. And mm -hmm. I think that is a huge part of mm -hmm. this. Yes. That was that was discussed. That was and, yeah. and it needs to be, when you do, you're going to revise the slideshow. You need to add that bullet point and maybe some headings that make it clear current structure, proposed future structure. That, that, that's not there now, but it would be good to have it, like, you know, Belt and suspenders. You're going to talk about it, but let's also put it in writing. Yeah, I, th I think that's one of the huge questions that that kind of came up, and that was the concern that was my concern when we had the full board there meeting. And I just wanted to make sure that's really, really clear for the commissioners when we come to the full board. And, and Bob, final. And I apologize on the word on the clock. <laughs> I guess what I'm a little concerned about, and I got to get it through my head. I'll think about this all night tonight. Was Say, if, say the Concord City Council or the City of Concord decides they want to go a different direction, or something blows up, or where, what protects us? In other words, can the City of Concord get a new mayor, new council, and they go, you know what, we need to change some of this? They, they can terminate the license for thirty days' notice. Yeah, isn't that is that bad? No? Okay. <laughs> Hi, all. Habib Shamsku with Momentum Station Incorporated. He's the uh, CFO, and he can comment on that. And I apologize for I just. And then also you said it goes from year to year. I don't know. Maybe I'm asking a crazy question. That's actually a very good question, uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'm sorry. We were Say again. That's actually a very good uh, question. Momentum Station does not have high dependency on that particular site. We always have been thinking about it that if in case city decided that not to do the any testing at that for particular facility and they want it for other purpose, we do have at least two other sites in mind in Contra Costa County to continue our testing, number one. Number two, you have to keep in mind, Gumentum Station program is not just test facility. Only 25% of our activity is at the test facility. The other 75% is what we do outside the facility, naming our SAV pro uh, project, which is 100% is being done at the Bishop Branch. So the, um, so you had another question, Bob? Yeah. Okay. But so they, so for the, they, they could terminate in 30 days, and then we would have, we, I don't know who we is, Somebody would have the capabilities of picking up the pieces, and uh, here's what I'm saying. Okay, you go out here, we build an overpass. We build some nice road. Oh, somebody does. And all this happens, and then they go, you know what? It'd be very difficult for us to move a bridge back over to <laughs> somewhere else. So I guess what really, con I, I don't know if it concerns me, or I've just got to get it through my head. Because different city councils and different mayor, I've seen it do different things. You know, this is this is Louis the Fourteenth here, who says "Après moi le deluge," the Sun King. Sorry, you know, you, you're you're going to be mayor for only a little little while longer in Brentwood, and after you leave, Brentwood's going to go to hell. Oh. <laughs> Après moi le deluge. Okay, I didn't mean to stare. At so, in fact, the next MOU with the City of Concord, we are asking for a five years commitment. And if we have to invest further dollar in building the infrastructure, it has to be a different agreement with the City of Concord to make sure that in the next 15 years, they are going to be committed to this program. So, through the Chair, if I could uh, just add, um, one, um, that's where we've always been. No. Two, there is also the north side, which that's is also where we have facilities, and that's the county. And the county has indicated they will do anything to help Gomentum Station. And not, and not take us out of the loop. Right. And um, first of all. Have they said that verbally or have yes. they said that written? Uh, they've said it verbally, and both of our, our chair, uh, who has also said that, 
and we we have an agreement with them now. A different chair, right? The a chair not present today. Yeah, a different chair, uh, the chair of the authority. Um, secondly, um, on this proposed, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I need to kill this. Um, that uh, uh, AAA in their acquisition is totally aware of that. And just like we've always been aware of it, and we've been wise in how we, what we decide to do where. Um, and there, the, the two alternative sites are, uh, well, one of those um, is actually um, a great location, and it's right here in Contra Costa County. Most importantly, um, to remember, while there is physical testing out there, and that, that will eventually go away, that, that need for that, because most of it will transfer to our public streets and things. Um, so... Um, it's always been known. It's always been accounted for, and um, the city in principle has agreed to do a five-year agreement for this, um, and that is pretty close to being done. And, so. I have a question, and then we'll get to it. This is actually a very good uh, dialogue. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm relatively new to this game at the CCTA. I mean, my understanding has always been that the area that's, that's on the Naval Weapon Station grounds that is on the city is going to be turned over to the city and where they're currently operating. I mean, the goal, the vision for that city is to put in houses and stuff. So I assume that's why it's just a license or a sub-license. They want to be able to get us off there whenever they want at any time that they want to break ground. Is that a fair statement? Can I clarify a few things? Uh, Absolutely. So there's two distinct uh, arrangements. One is interim use and the other one is permanent use. Right. So the sub-license is only for interim use only because of the relationship with the Navy and because of the BRAC process. So Got it. Once, once the property actually get once the BRAC pro process completes mm -hmm. and the property is transferred to the city permanently, then the sub-license is no longer required. And who would our relationship be with be able to continue out there? So would CCTA enter into a new license directly with the city for that purpose? That is correct. It and that would remain, that's also, that would be a, continue to be a 30 days termination at will, you know, that sort of thing? Yeah, it would, it would be with the city and the county, yeah. and then those terms of those agreements would be, you know, a um, negotiable in terms of a, a three to five year, you know, commitment to having us operate. Because the city is still trying to understand, you know, their phasing of the reuse plan, and so... Yeah. The discussion. So we're on that area. We're on top of those areas they want to reuse. That's correct. That's why it's a license. I mean, legally, my understanding is there are various strengths of rights to access and use property. The license is basically at the very bottom end of that total <laughs> bowl. In other words, you get you, a license doesn't give you any, you know, particular pos strong possessory <laughs> interest. An easement is better. Leases are stronger. Easements, fee title. Licenses? are weak for a reason, and that's because the owner of the property wants to retain control and claw back possession at, at when they want to. So I get the reasons why that occurs, but I think Newell's right in terms of explaining why it has to be the way it is currently. And I know you had a question, Julie. I actually have some additional information. Um, Transpac yesterday had a presentation on the Naval Weapons Station and the process and the City of Concord's plans for the Concord Naval Weapons Station, which are extensive. They're also over the next 30 to 40 years. They don't really actually expect anything to get built out there. The first phase, they figure, will take 15 to 20 years to get built. The which is still why you don't want a license as opposed to something permanent. Exactly. But... After that, current council member, um, who is part of a subcommittee of the City of Concord's uh, council, who is um, kind of the, it's a, it's a subcommittee on Gomentum Station, has expressed that the majority, current majority of the council would like to see working toward, once they get the property transferred from the Navy, they would like to work toward making Gomentum a permanent facility and and then um, work toward being able to get jobs related to it, that kind of thing, uh, as part of their master plan. For the, 
the plan has been kind of revised somewhat and the area that we're currently using doesn't really see a purpose to them until at least probably phase two, which, which, is, which is many years down the road. Okay. And so I think we've got plenty of time. And once this transitions out mm. to public streets for most of the testing anyway, we won't need the physical plant as much as you know, yeah. remember, one of the reasons we started this whole program was to try to bring innovation and jobs to Contra Costa County. And oh. if the Naval Weapons Station can be the location of some of those jobs that are generated from this testing that is taking place now, the city of Concord wants to be the location to cite those. That is very good to know. Thank you for that education, Julie. I really appreciate it. And I wasn't aware, I mean, I've been well, following that Concord Naval Weapons Station planning effort in Concord, and I just get, I've gotten, you know, behind the times. Well, so I appreciate that. They keep slipping, too. Right? I know that. But I get that. I mean, it, I, I'm not only personally entirely to blame for this. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> um, you know, I hate to complicate this, and, and, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating a fact that, that some of you guys seem to have a whole lot of sort of inside information on this, you know. Uh, Newell's talked to AAA. You've talked to Concord, you, you know, and and so I'm kind of sitting here. I haven't talked to anybody, and um, and so whatever I'm getting, I'm getting from you all, and I appreciate that. But I I think at some point it would be really helpful to try to understand what the big picture is here and what the motivation of each player is. You know, what's I mean, forget the Navy. I understand that, and but you know, I've I've got a a um, uh, a uh, former defense facility in Richmond that we've been struggling with for 23 years. And I understand what can happen when a city council flip-flops. And yep. I can understand when somebody decides they want to litigate. And I've been, I've seen it all. Um, and um, so, you know, what would be helpful for, to, for me is to sort of get back from, you know, all the licenses and that kind of thing and say, okay, if, if we were starting from scratch today, what's the motivation of each partner? What's the, what's the motivation of the city of Concord to be involved in this? What do they want out of it? What are they getting out of it? What do they want out of it? What's the motivation for CCTA to be involved in it? What do we want to get out of it? And what do we expect to get out of it? And then the same way with AAA. And I guess it just, it, it, it seems to be overly complicated that all of this, uh, you know, there's only there's only one component of this that ties everybody together, and that's a sub license that's good for 30 days that does not allow any permanent fixtures to be constructed on the area that the license applies to. And anyway, it, it, I, it's it strikes me. It just seems like it seems like everything here is extremely tenuous, and yet we're building, you know. A, a quarter of a billion dollar partnership over something that's that's ephemeral, you know, and I, I just don't I don't understand it. The but question, I'll I, talk to you. the question, I guess, for for Tom and maybe for all of us, is you're putting together a presentation ultimately to the board with regard to this master cooperative agreement, and maybe it's time for us to do a little bit more education, step back, and ask the fundamental questions. And lay out those community that community of interest, what, why our interests all align here, notwithstanding the fact that we have a sub license that is of extremely short duration, but it, it, on on paper, but in reality will be there for the next 10 to 15 years because nobody has any plans and they all see the benefits of keeping momentum at that location. Does that make sense? Yeah. In fact, mm -hmm. I want to say this uh, exactly. I was kind of with Tom. He just said it much, much better than I did. But, uh, mm -hmm. I, Big surprise know. there? Sorry, just kidding. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, I was just... A couple of dumb ways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I was going to say that it, it's a really good point. Um, and obviously the reason why we're meeting with AAA because we were appointed to the committee to do that because we can't get everybody there mm -hmm. so we don't have a quorum. Um, two, but, but um, just to be really clear, um, and it's always been this way. The city of Concord's only, only um, interest in Gomentum 
is that it puts them on the map worldwide as being a place where new technologies are being um, created and generated. And it's not so much the physical, it's just that that is there. Their hope, as well as this agency has been, is to create an engineering school. And there are already schools that have already said, we want to build, oh yeah, we got a couple minutes. We want to build that there. So they want to be that partner. They want to be the city that was known as that. Um, and so we're quite honestly taking advantage of that, that desire and trying to help facilitate that. Um, and the um, AAAs, I think we need to have uh, more discussion about it, but it's pretty straightforward. They just want to be the financial partner. We can't. We will not raise enough money. We can't make momentum go further than it is because we don't have the resources. It's not part of Measure J. So we have to create a way to have a partnership where somebody who has a, has a valid interest that's complementary. We knew that we've always had to have insurance companies. So AAA has been a partner since momentum started, just as our other insurance companies on similar ones around the country. Because you have to have an insurance model and an underwriting methodology in order to get any of this, the technology. For somebody to put in your car an auto driving feature or a early warning system, even anti-lock brakes, the insurance companies, the underwriters had to approve that in order for it to go there. So all of this technology as it marches forward, the check and balance is having this. So their interest. But no, you know that. No, I'm just sharing that. that. Yeah, so I'm just sharing so we have we here yeah, have a high we're, level we're, of We're all trying to get up to your level of, 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 of level knowledge. Here. Here. That includes me. So and, 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 so I'm sharing I'm sharing that with so that Tim and then when they come back that we say that this was all of those things. We're designing your PowerPoint for next Wednesday. Right. You get that, Tim. But I did want to give you assurance that it has been thought out. But again, because it's not directly in CCTA, some people have gotten involved, volunteered, because again, it's not a measure J. So we now have a methodology how we can marry ourselves. I am going to suggest that we have adequately given the committee an update on our discussions. And given directions to with, staff. For, and for given Wednesday. directions to staff. And so are we on to the next item on our agenda? Yes, we are. Uh, for which we have, it's 320, we have eight and a half minutes to go through that and be done. So are we, and we're already halfway through that, right? Yes, we are. So you, you wrap up, tell us what we haven't talked about, and we'll give you additional direction and adjourn and go home as quickly as we can. Thank you. you you're on. So I, I'm just going to make this short and easy. I think there needs to be more education in terms of what, before we actually discuss the next item, and staff recommends that we table this item for a future meeting. I think that's a good idea. And just so I know, we were, this was supposed to be, an update on the master cooperative agreement. Yep. Through the chair, just one more question. We've got a little time. Uh, we're into that second item, and, and question time is now. Okay. Uh, what I guess I'm asking you, we just ask an awful lot of you, and that's for our board meeting next Wednesday, correct? Mm -hmm. And so you're saying... We'll be ready. You, can you do it? Sure you can. Okay. I think it's good. <laughs> and you don't have to change your name to do that. I just want to make that clear. Um, so any other questions of staff on this item? All right, then um, we are on to, I guess, is, we're up to adjournment? Yep. All right, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We are adjourned at 320. I want to thank everybody for being so quick in their comments. Good meeting, guys. What's the, what's the contract? Um, I do an update.